All right, hello everybody. How's it going? Welcome, Wanderers. I am going to put this out on Twitter right quick. Now that it works. So that I can let everybody else know that we're doing this and it's happening right now and stuff like that. How's everybody been? Had a good weekend? Did you do anything this weekend? <laughs> Did you go anywhere fun? Now, I've had a lot of trouble with my live stream link not posting, so hello Priscilla. So I uh, started just, what I started to do is just go ahead and do it live. It's a little easier that way. And that way I know also that it posts. <laughs> so. I've been having some trouble with that. Anyways, let me get my notes because I did take a lot of notes for this. Just because, I don't know. It's easier for me to do things like this if I have notes. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're just going to go ahead and get started here. And all right. So we call ourselves introverted traveler. But what is an introvert, right? What, what, what do we mean by that? So tonight, that's what we're going to talk about. Feel free to ask your questions and I'll answer them the best I can. Hello, Justin. Hi. <laughs> So I went to dictionary.com and dictionary.com defines introvert this way, a shy, reticent person. The modern Latin that the word is derived from, that we get the word introvert from, is from two words, intro, meaning to the inside, and then verter, verter, meaning to turn. So to turn to the inside, right? So I also found a quote that I thought was important to add as well from Scientific American that says, it's also important to understand that introversion is different from shyness. Shyness is the fear of negative judgment, while introversion is simply the pre preference for less stimulation. Shyness is inherently uncomfortable. Introversion is not. Excuse me. Now, shyness, introversion overlap. And for each person, it's different. So. For example, Brendan and I are both introverts, but we're both introverts different ways, right? So his introversion um, is different than mine. He, his is deeper than mine. That's that kind of thing. So some of my personal stuff is I think when I was younger, I was very shy. And then through my dad's urgings and teachings, I was able to break out of my shell a bit. I cannot I can remember not ever really being into big parties or even small parties. You know, I often don't know what to do in social situations. And I think that's part of being an introvert. So as there are many types of introverts though, I think you go through stages as you grow into adulthood. So I was really shy when I was a young girl. I would like hide behind my parents. I didn't want to talk to anybody. When my parents would throw parties, I would hide from the other adults that were there. I just wasn't that that into it. But now I can go to parties and it's fine and that, that kind of thing. So I think it's important to say to to make that distinction. Another thing is um, some things I've been reading to kind of try and understand introverts and try and understand myself really is this whole thing where extroverted people, they love to hang out with other people. They, they want to do it. For them, it's exciting and it's, it's fun and it's what they want to do. For introverts, though, hanging out with other people, depending on what kind of introvert they are, can be very um, tiring. Like I know, depending on who I'm hanging out with, this can get to be, for, this can get to me. So, for example, when we're when I'm having family time, a lot of family time, 
They want your attention all the time, just all the time. And for me, and and for Brennan as well, I wish he was here to tell you, but not this time. But for me, I can only concentrate on people for probably about two hours or so. Two hours of like quality, you got my attention time. After that, I, I can still interact with people, but I in here am only halfway there. <laughs> And that's just how my brain works. I can just only do about two hours of full-on, you have my 100% complete attention, and then after that I slip right back into being an introvert, being basically who I am, which is someone who is a thinker more, hand, more than maybe someone who is, hey, let's talk about everything under the sun with 12 other people. Now that being said, it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to put it to because if I'm at like say a dinner party and the dinner party only lasts an hour and a half you know or an hour we have a conversation about the things you know the three things you're not supposed to talk about in in mixed company or whatever you know politics religion and money right <laughs> you're not supposed to talk about those things those are three things I love to talk about the most so, you know, if I'm at a dinner party, I've got, there's like 12 other people there. I'll, I'll be really quiet. I'll listen to what everybody has to say. And then, then I might say something. But it just has to be really, it has to be something that I feel very strongly about for me to say anything about it. And a lot of people take that as, well, she doesn't like you, or she doesn't like us, or she really doesn't want to be here, or any of those things. That's not really what it is. It's just sometimes people already say what I'm thinking, so I just don't say anything. Sometimes I don't think it's worth the interaction to state my case. And that is all part I'm learning of being an introvert. That's just part of my personality. So why this can sometimes go against the idea of a traveler is because a lot of times the traveler and the, the gypsy sort of ideal that I love, they're not really introverted people, typically. That's not really what you see. What you see is people who just love to go out and interact with people all the time and they just want to get to know all kinds of new stuff and everything and for introverts that can be a little bit hard because we're not as into talking to other people as extroverts are if you're an extroverted person you love to just have big parties and they can last all night and everything and for me it's like i can have a party but that party is only going to last for about an hour <laughs> until I'm pretty much done with it and I'll sit in a corner somewhere and people watch even if it's just the people I know. So that's just something to keep in mind. Introverts are not people who hate people per se, but they are people who need more internal time. I read something else on some of these links I'm going to leave at the bottom once we get done with this live stream about how introverts prefer less stimulation and I guess that is actually a good way to put it is that my stimulation level can only get so far until I want to sit down and think about everything I just experienced and that's the thing about it is I we enjoy thinking about it we enjoy experiencing it not only through the experiment experience but also then going back and thinking about how can we apply it or what happened there or etc like that so there's something else to think about i read another part of an article that i'm going to link where the lady was talking about how she's able to get up and have conversations able to get up and do public speaking even though she's an introverted person but she always gets nervous doing it and so how I would explain that is basically this is that or how I would compare that is even when I'm sitting here doing this now I'm going live and I get nervous doing this like I get nervous like oh okay okay I gotta do this I gotta make it you know perfect I just want everything to be nice you know when I make a plan it's got to be just so you know and what I'm learning is that's part of my introverted nature. I want things to be just so, and I like them this way. And that's another reason why sometimes people think 
well, introverts can't be travelers because when you travel, things don't go the way they should, or they don't go the way you think they're going to, but that is the way it should go. <laughs> it's just not the way you think it's supposed to, and uh, you have to deal with a lot of people. And truthfully, when we travel, we don't deal with a lot of people, so it really works out. We try and go places where maybe there aren't a lot of people. But so that's why traveling as introverts can be a little strange for people. It's like, but I thought all you wanted to do was stay home. Well, I do enjoy a place that is set aside for me to read or think about what happened and how to quantify it inside my mind and things like that. So that's another reason why we're building the cargo trailer. We're calling it the introvert cave. <laughs> So that when we have these moments, we can then go ahead and say, okay, now it's just time to sit back and relax and not be with anybody, just be with each other. A lot of times when Brennan and I are with each other, even laying, you know, we can be laying in bed next to each other. We're not interacting with each other. <laughs> we're reading our books or something. We're totally, we're in the same room, but mentally we're somewhere else. So that's something else two introverts together can understand that need. Just that desire to go to our room, close the door, and not want to deal with things right now. It's just time now for us to decompress. So I hope that helps you guys kind of understand it's not like a hatred of people and it's not even really like a shyness. It's just our brains work differently. Our brains work more towards thinking about what we've been doing than thinking about uh, things like, um, well, did you see that skirt she was wearing? Like, we just don't care. <laughs> Some of the things that we as introverts care about, the things that we think about are more like, well, how did that person talk about or treat that other person? So we're looking at what is what are you as a person? What is your um, personality and what is your your morals basically? So a lot of times every introvert I've ever spoken to has said that the way that what they like to do is people watch and what they do is they see how people interact with each other and then they see what people really think and they can see that by how they act. Okay. So a lot of times as an introvert, when I first meet someone, I don't talk to them. I don't talk to them a whole lot. I may talk to them a little bit, but not a whole lot. And what I'm doing is I'm watching to see who they are because this is a kind of like a, a thing. People will show you who they are every time. They will say a lot of stuff. They may even be the most polite person you've ever met. But they'll show you who they are through their actions, right? And that's something that my dad taught me. It's something that's reoccurring in all fables and every way that we teach ourselves how to understand ourselves, basically, which is what we do with fables and storytelling and things like that. We understand that the person's actions are what makes them who they are. It, what, it, it shows you who they are. So I may meet someone, I'm not going to talk to them that much. If someone I know has introduced me to someone, I might say, hey, how's it going and all that other stuff. And I will let the person who's introducing me and the person that I'm being introduced to talk. And I'll just sit there and I'll just watch. And that's just, that is something an introvert does. We just watch you instead. So... I'm trying to think of something else that's uh, applicable to me as an introvert, as someone who just, I mean, a lot of, there are things that sort of, uh, you know, those, those boxes you can buy once a month and they have an introvert one. And one of the more, one of the things that, uh, some of the things that you can look at somebody and go, you're an introvert, aren't you? Is they spend a lot of time reading, soaking in the bath. That is one of the things that helps them decompress. Uh, they spend a lot of time listening to music, and a lot of us are writers. My personal thing is I enjoy listening to music. I enjoy writing. 
excuse me, which part of this whole thing with um, the traveling is I get to write and I enjoy writing and I think that um, since writing, since doing this, my writing has gotten better. My speaking hasn't <laughs> because I still use um, but there you go. So it's just sort of different things. Uh, one of the uh, memes or tropes or whatever you want to say of introverts is that how they party hard is they sit in a chair and read a book. <laughs> and that's definitely me. I get all excited when I can sit down in a chair and read a book I've already read or watch a movie I've, I've seen a million times with like some peanut butter crackers and just do that and maybe that's just enjoyable for me. When it comes to the traveling, I enjoy the car ride because usually we're not talking, we're just listening to music or we're listening to a podcast or something where people are talking about a certain subject and then we can have a, a deeper conversation from that. So I also enjoy getting there and then once we get there, we usually maybe we'll talk to somebody who's in charge, but after that we go our own way. We, we go out of our way to kind of get away from the crowds and things like that. So that's just part of being an introvert. That's just what we like. Now that doesn't mean, again, like I really kind of want to stress this because a lot of people look at it and they say, well, you just hate people or you just don't like people or whatever. And that's not really the case. It's just that dealing with people, having to, whenever you interact with someone, for someone like me who's an introvert, is it takes a lot of our resources, like a lot of my brain is really, really active towards talking to that person. I'm paying attention to their facial expressions, the way their body moves, I'm listening to their tone of voice, and I'm trying to understand what they're saying. This is the reason I don't like talking on the phone, and that's another introvert thing. I don't know when it's my turn to speak. I don't know whether, you know, something just crawl over their foot, and that's why their tone of voice changed, that kind of thing. We, we notice a lot of stuff. So, like I said, even whenever I was younger and I was a kid, I was very shy. I didn't like all the noise. You know, I don't, all that stimulation is, is not something we really enjoy all that much. The word introvert is derived from those two words, intro meaning the inside, and verter meaning to turn, so to turn inside. I have walked by people several times that I know and I have no problem with. They understand how I am and stuff like that, and I'm just sort of a quiet person. I've walked completely by them because I'm thinking about things. And that's completely normal. If you have a friend who's an introvert and you see them, and even if they, they, I have seen these people even, like I've looked right at them and because I am thinking about something else, my brain does not register, hey, there's that person, you need to go up and talk to them. <laughs> it doesn't register it or it'll say, don't care and just say, you know, we'll talk to them some other time. So maybe a way to know how an introvert likes you, this is something else that um, oh no, sorry, let me go back to my other point. Don't take that personally. A lot of introverts are like that. We have a goal. We just want to get that goal done, especially if we have to go someplace like the supermarket or we have to go someplace where there are a lot of people. We're, we're uncomfortable and we just want to get in and get out and go. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like we don't like you or we don't like this, that, or the other. It's just we're, we're very focused and we have a goal and so that's what we're going to do. We're not the kind of people who really enjoy standing around in the supermarket in the middle of the aisle talking to you. And we will talk to you, but you are going to have to be the one to, you know, tap us on the shoulder and be like, hey, you know, then we will. But mostly we're focused on our task and that's just what we want to do and then get out. <laughs> so there's that. So maybe how to tell how to tell if an introvert's into you or something <laughs> like that. And mainly if an introverted person is taking the time to talk to you or, or they notice you and they say hello or uh, they call you or they text you on their own. So that's not something we typically do. 
and that's something else you'll find in the links I'll provide. So that's not something we typically do. We only do it with people who we care about. And in my case, when it comes to doing things like calling people or texting people or things like that, I have a great, like I pick it up and I get real nervous. <laughs> Like, I don't know how this phone call or this text is going to go. Um, um, so, um, you know, that's the shy part. Like, am I going to call this person and it's going to go horribly? Am I going to do this text and they're going to miss it or whatever? But if an introvert tries to interact with you, however clumsily we do it, because we do do it, it's not our, it's not our strong point at all to interact with people, then that is, that's a good sign, right? that's something that you're like all right cool I'm doing it uh, don't push us because basically if you try and push us for an answer or you try and push us for I got to do this right now a lot of introverts I know including myself and my husband will just will back off well we, we will retreat that's not always good and there are things that as introverts we should work on but that is the reality of it. Our brain immediately goes, I mean, our, it immediately clicks off and goes, okay, I'm not sure I can do this because we haven't had time to think about whether we want to do it or not. So there's that. Um, let me see, what else? So another way to know if your introvert likes you <laughs> or that sort of thing is if they choose to spend physical time with you. Like if I just call you, that's one thing. If I'm trying to, if I want to get together with you, and it's just like a lot of times when we as introverts imagine uh, like a get together, a lot of people imagine like, oh, you and your four best girlfriends. No, an introvert imagines it like themselves and one or two other people, and that's it. Excuse me. That's the top when it gets into five and six people then that's when it gets into okay I, I think I can only do this for so long one or two people as long as we have time where we can just sort of chill out for about 15 minutes or so and think about things or just let our brain do its thing then you know it's fine I, I, I can hang out with certain people in my family all day long but because what's going on is we're having a time frame where we're interacting and then after that there's like a time frame where we're taking naps or everybody's just sort of down after eating food or something and in that time frame I'm decompressing and I'm using that time to just sort of think about what we were talking about or just sort of relax where there's no stimulation and for introverts guys for the stimulation part um, myself, I can, that's the only thing I can really speak to. I will sit fairly often in a room with no lights on and just listen to like the outside noises. Okay, listen to my cat moving around, listen to like the sound of the refrigerator and for me that's very peaceful. I enjoy doing that. That helps me relax. Just sit there and have nothing going on, just my brain just very calm. So I hope that helps you guys understand just three things I want you to remember. It's not personal. If we walk by you, even if we see you, our brain is probably doing something else. If you want to say hi, just wave. Like there are cues in my brain when somebody waves, I won't automatically respond every time. If you give me a second, then I'll, you'll see a smile and a slow wave. That's my brain coming back <laughs> from whatever it is I'm thinking about. Two, we like you, but we like our alone time and, and low stimulation time frames too. So just understand that about us. It's not a personal thing. It's not a, we hate you or we're angry or we're mad or we're sad or we're depressed. It's just what we need to do. And three, one thing I really wanted to stress to maybe introverts watching this is guys talk to the extroverts that you're <clears throat> part of in your family. Because extroverts don't get this. Extroverts, which is most people, most people are this way. They want to get together and they want to get together with a bunch of people and everything. And you just, you're not like that. And that's fine. 
God doesn't make us all the same and that's the way it should be. But maybe you should just explain it to them. And like I said, I'm going to include some links in the comments of this video so that you can send it to them. And I, I say most introverts probably fall within most of these. And then just talk to them. Just be like, you know, I can really only handle this and that's what I can handle. And just be honest. And I know it can be real scary for some of us, but there it is. <laughs> So this was kind of a long one, guys, kind of personal. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. And something else to keep in mind, guys, is all, we're all, all of us introverts are different. Some of us can people, as we say, for longer than others, and some of us can't do it for very long at all. So it just differs. I, I found within myself that about two hours, about two hours is what I can do and you're going to have my full-on attention like an extrovert. After that, I, I begin to slip, and I'm just... I have tried to do all kinds of different things to make myself stay there for longer, and I just can't do it. I get so tired and worn out and worn down that the next day I don't want to have anything to do with anybody. <laughs> so it's just better if I do, like, for two hours, if I do it for a couple hours, or if I know I'm going to do it all day, to have like the time frame, like to have it very structured where the time frame is, this is when we're doing it. And then have some time where I'm just sitting there and I'm decompressing, thinking about what we were talking about. And then that's that time frame. And then I can rejoin after that. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that myself. So structure is good for introverts. We like it. That's another thing that makes travel easy for us is where we've got our papers, we've got our all our stuff that we need, and we're ready to go. <laughs> so thanks for joining me this time, guys. Hopefully next week Brandon will be back with us, and hopefully my hair won't be so crazy. Right now I've got a I'm trying to grow up my bangs so I can do a different hairdo. So until next time, guys. Bye. I really enjoyed having you here. See you later.